Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? What's up? Winning Cures Everything. College football previews for week number 12. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. Whoo. Jamming that music. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. You can find us over at winningcureseverything.com. Of course, all of our picks, previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms, etc. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. If you're not following on YouTube, I'm sure that's where you're watching. That's where most everybody watches. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button on this video. Leave some comments. Tell us what you think about the previews this week. Tell us what games we should have talked about if we didn't talk about your team. Uh, or a, a just not even your team. If it's a game that you think is interesting that we probably should have hit on, pop that thing down there. Let everybody know about it because we do have a community here. We want you involved. Talk to us. Tell us what you're thinking. We, uh, we love to hear from you. If you're listening on the podcast, make sure you leave a nice review. We always appreciate those. Apple Podcast Reviews, whatever your favorite podcast app is, but especially Apple, whatever their algorithm is that, that Apple does. It helps. The reviews help. The subscriptions help. So uh, download this thing. Share it out with your buddies. Tell everybody you know about it. We do appreciate that. Of course, the show brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. Let's go ahead and fire into this. We got some big matchups this week. Game number one, Oklahoma at Baylor. 6.30 6.30 p.m. ABC Saturday night, McLean Stadium in Waco, Texas. Baylor, a 10-point dog as no a 9-0 and team. No respect whatsoever. Chris Felica had a really interesting tweet about this. It was, um, what was the number? It's like the last time that, or the last six times or seven times, whatever it is, that a 9-0 and team was more than a touchdown underdog at home this late in the season. They're like 5-2 and two straight up. I mean, that's just absurd numbers. That's right. Absurd numbers. No, he's not wrong. Uh, disrespectful. Sure, it is. It absolutely is. What, uh, tell me, I think we're both on the same page here. I think Baylor gets this win. Yeah, I do too. Um, and I'll go and write that down for our picks here. There you go. But, uh, I... I I just don't understand. Like, I, I I see where people are coming from because Oklahoma is the big name. And they've got weapons, man. I mean, they, they got not, weapons. this is not a knock on Oklahoma. But Baylor has also got weapons. They haven't used them a lot here lately. But they their skill position guys are every bit as athletic as what Oklahoma has. They have just as much speed at the skill positions as Oklahoma does. And Oklahoma's defense is far, far less That's superior. what I'm saying. I mean, they are inferior to Baylor. So I, I don't understand how we could get to 10. Name, name recognition alone. And people don't respect Baylor. I mean, if you look at the rankings, the college football rankings just came out. They're 13th, man. I mean, I just, it, and don't get me wrong. Like, Baylor, as far as statistics go, they're not, like, we're gonna, hang on, we're world gonna, we're beaters. We're going to punish them because they barely beat TCU. But we're not going to punish Oklahoma for barely beating uh, Iowa State. Iowa State, who take uh, who who uh, who Baylor, Baylor also beat. Already beat. Like, yeah. come on! Like we punished one. Oh, look, they're barely beating folks. Well, who the hell is Oklahoma beating the hell out of? They beat a, they beat a bunch of bad teams early. Yeah. You know what? They hadn't beaten nobody after that. No, you're they, right. They have struggled to get through these games. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Jalen Hurts, the shine has come off a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Uh, he's still putting up stats. Oh, no, no. He's still an incredible quarterback, all right? We're, let's not get this wrong. Oh, yeah. And they're probably going to put up big numbers against Baylor. But I don't – this is the toughest defense they will play the entire season. Baylor, uh, number 27 rush defense, number 51 pass defense. Oklahoma, number 13 rush offense, number 6 passing offense. Yeah, no. They're, they're, they're incredible. Yeah. They're good. It's I think but Baylor I think both can, of those numbers go down. Baylor can uh, can match up here. Baylor's defensive numbers will go down, but but Oklahoma's offensive numbers are damn sure gonna go down. You uh you have got that right. So I we're both taking Baylor here, uh at home. Like I I just I think it's way too many points. I think Baylor wins the ball game. Yeah, I do too. Like I I, I don't think that's 
crazy by any I stretch do think of the Waco imagination. Is going to be insane as well. Oh yeah, college game day. I mean, they hadn't been there in forever. Like this is this is going to be awesome. It's going to be a very interesting spectacle. Game number two, Georgia minus three at Auburn. They're going on the plains, going to Jordan Hare. The last time they went down there, they got got forty-one to seventeen as the number one team in the country. And seventeen ain't ain't it. Ain't it. They scored ten of those points in garbage time. Yeah, they were they were housed. Yeah, they they got they Beat got smoked. To sleep. Yeah. Now they did they did get their revenge in That's, the SEC hey, title game. That don't matter. But, but man, Auburn is a tough place to play. Auburn has covered four straight at home as an underdog. They have uh, they've covered eight of the last ten as a home underdog. Georgia's starting center got injured against Missouri. You want consistency. You want to be at full strength against this Auburn defensive line. Oh, yeah. that's This is a scary predicament for this Georgia offense. I completely agree they, with that. They are not great at explosive plays. They dink and dunk and, and try and run the football. I don't know that you're going to be able to do that against this front seven. Like, maybe I'm crazy. And, and Auburn, let's not get it wrong. Yes, their front seven's incredible. They've got speed on the secondary, too. Yeah. I mean, so it's it's not like... Those guys are are not good, and they're they're just slow. And if you get past the front seven with uh, you know you dinking and dunking and your screen passes and stuff, that you're just taking everything to the house. Okay. Yeah, I mean the Auburn Auburn's got dudes everywhere on this defense. Yes, they do. They're really good. So I'm trying to figure out. Let's let's talk for two seconds about covering spreads here. Georgia is favored by three on the road. Their average against the spread this year is dead even. That doesn't surprise me. Like, they are right on the number all the time. Auburn, however? See, I don't know that that's true. I think in the game. No, no, it's not. It's not. Like, obviously, it fluctuates from game to game. When they don't cover, they don't cover big. And when they do cover, they cover massive. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the way I've watched a lot of uh, Georgia games. It's not, some of them, yes. Some of them, yes. Uh, against Florida, I mean, they were six and a half point favorites, one by seven. Yeah. You know, they're they're right there on the number in a lot of games. Now, South Carolina, they lost by three. Yeah. They were twenty four and a half point favorites. I mean, it, and then of course, there's been other games like Arkansas um, State. They're favored by thirty eight, and they win by fifty five. Like Missouri, Vanderbilt. Yeah, you know, they when they beat the hell out of somebody, they beat the hell out of them. Yeah, Notre Dame and Florida, their two biggest wins. But that's that's playing a power team that's equal is equal can get yeah. to your to your ability and your coaching style. Um, I think Auburn's that. Uh, Auburn's against the spread average plus six. I mean they they do better than the spread indicates. You regularly like Vegas. Doubted them greatly early yes. in the season. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. This is what happens um, when you wait for a team to prove it to you. By the time they prove it to you, all the value is gone. And I got a lot of that value early. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you most certainly did. Still like them, though. You uh, you taking Auburn to win? Yeah, I think Auburn's going to win this game. I think Auburn's going to win this game, too. Um, so we'll we'll both put that on. I've disrespected that. Georgia several times this year. It, it doesn't really scare me. I no. lost. They've, they've gotten me a couple of times, but it doesn't scare me. Me either. Let's move into game number three. Minnesota at Iowa. Minnesota 9-0. and Coming off a big, massive, the biggest home win in, in 100 years. Oh, yeah. In the history of the school. The biggest I game. mean, that's yeah. as big as it gets. They beat the number four team in the country, Penn right. State. They are 9-0. and They are now moved up to the number eight team in the college football playoff rankings. And they are a three-point dog at Iowa. Now, this is a 3 p.m. game on Fox. At Kinnick. Kinnick is a tough place to play. I was had a good football team. I was had three losses this year. Yeah. All of them by single digits. Correct. They are in every game all the time. It always comes down to one score. Iowa, three point favorite. Tell me you like Minnesota here, right? I do like Minnesota here. I think Minnesota's gonna stay undefeated. I know it's gonna be close. I think it's gonna be a fight. I think this is going to be a tougher game for Minnesota than Penn State was. But at the end of the day, they showed they're not one-dimensional. They can run the ball. 
they can throw the ball. That Penn State defense is for real, too. And they were able to move the football on them. Long, sustainable drives and big plays. There's a combination where their offense just mixed it up. Defensively, they gave Penn State all they wanted. Penn State made a comeback at the end of the game, in the fourth quarter, to pull it close. But that was when they were down, and, and they, they trailed the entire ball game. I don't think that Iowa has that kind of firepower to where if they get down by two scores, they can keep it close. They can come back and make it a one-score game. But Iowa is not one of those teams that, that just has the offensive ability to, to, to come back. Iowa better get out of lead early and sit on it. I don't know what's going to happen. There's, there's no numbers that can tell me that Iowa really should be able to cover this game. And that's almost exactly why I think that they will. Okay. I like Iowa minus the three here. Kinnick is tough. And they haven't gotten a big one at Kinnick yet. I think the letdown for Minnesota there's after be such a massive letdown. game. Yeah, I, I think that emotional letdown will get them caught. I think that Iowa can win by three. I think they can win by, you know, 21-17, something like that. It's going to be cold. It's going to be Big Ten football. I like Iowa to be able to win this football game. I, I think it's just too much for Minnesota to go and do this right after a, a big win at home against Penn State. So I'm I'm taking Iowa minus the three here. You're taking Minnesota straight up, right? Taking Minnesota straight up. Straight up. All right, next ball game, game number four. Let's talk about Happy Valley. Now, typically, this wouldn't be a big game. But this year, Penn State coming off of a loss. Indiana coming off a bye. Indiana is seven and two on the season. Penn right. State is eight and one, which did it surprise you? Indiana's not ranked. N- no, yeah, but I mean they don't have any massive wins, and they got embarrassed by Ohio State. But like everybody has, everybody you, has. Can't, you can't say how bad the loss was at Ohio State because that that throws everything out. Yeah, um, I mean I could easily see them being in over you know Oklahoma State or some of the teams down in the twenties. At, and we still got time. I mean, obviously, they win this ball game. Oh, yeah, they're going to be in there. They'll be in there. Um, it's 11 a.m. on ABC at Beaver Stadium in Happy Valley. Penn State's a 15-point favorite here. Yeah, I think the number's too big. I, I think I might I, agree with you. I like Indiana a lot. I think they're a good football team. I think they're well coached. And uh, in Penn State, going to be licking their wounds. Now, they're going to be coming out looking to say, hey, we're still here, and, and, and all this stuff. They're going to be fired up, ready to play this game. But uh, 15 was just too big of a number. I'll, I'll go on and give you a couple of uh, couple of data points here. Okay. The, the best thing that Penn State does on offense is passing the football. Yep. They're number 39 in the country on that. That also matches up against what Indiana does best on defense. They are number 19 against the pass. So, slight advantage in Indiana. A little bit. Now, on the other side of the football, Indiana, number 84 rushing offense in the country, number 22 passing offense. I was going to say, they throw the ball. They throw the ball really well. They like to sling it. Penn State, like Indiana doesn't worry about running so much. Penn State, number five in the country against the run. Number 77 against the pass. Well, and last week, we thought, Minnesota was one-dimensional, and all they were going to do is run the football. Uh, no, sir. No, they can throw it with the best of them. And if Minnesota was able to and throw it on Penn State. wide open, too. Oh, yeah. And I watched every snap of that football game. And Indiana will be able to find these guys. Yeah, I agree. I completely agree. Do you think Indiana so, can win this game? I think they can. Did Penn State go 2-0, and 0-2 oh, oh in the last two? I don't think I, – I think Penn State wins. I do, too. Um – I can't see. But I think it's super close. I do, too. I, we agree on that. As Lee Corso would say, closer than the experts think. I, I think Franklin is too good of a coach to let his team fall two games in a row. I mean, he did do it last year with Michigan State. So, oh, shit. Yeah, he did. But, but that was a weird game. 
That was I mean, rain delay. Could, you don't think this could be a weird game just the way it's played out? I'm not I don't look for a four hour rain delay. No, and it all won't that kind be weird mess. like it won't be the same kind of weird, but you don't think this game could play out. I mean it, yeah, it could absolutely play out weird. I think Indiana could win the game. I don't think they will. You wouldn't put them in a money line parlay, is what you're saying. No, I mean, if, if you're talking round robin. That, that you wouldn't put in a round robin because every time you've told me to take a team out, that team has won. 100%. Yeah, it I is need, the last I need two your times. list of teams that you would not put in there. And I might put Indiana in there. I think I'm going to leave them out there. <laughs> it's probably not a bad idea. <laughs> it's probably not a terrible idea. All right, let's move we, on. Uh, we both taken in Indiana. to win. Indiana to the points. I think 15 is a lot, man. It's, it's Three scores. A ton. I, I think Penn State maybe. Against may be, a good team. Penn State wins by a touchdown, 10 points here. Hell yeah, they can like win by two it. touchdowns. It's not 15. And, and still cover. Still get the cover for Indiana. All right, last of the big games. Let's talk about the midshipmen. Going to South Bend, Navy, a nine-and-a-half point underdog at Notre Dame. It's 1.30 p.m. on NBC, Notre Dame Stadium in South Bend, Indiana. Navy only has one loss on the season. I know. And that is to the Memphis Tigers. Our Memphis Tigers. And the game is close. Yeah. Navy has, has kind of been blowing up some teams. No, they've looked really good. This is this is a good year for this game, I think. It's going to be fun. I think it's going to be exciting. I love this rivalry. I like that this game. There are years that I hate it when Navy's just been bad. And it's just like, what are we doing? Well, like we're, we're last watching, year. Yeah. Navy was pretty bad. Notre they played Dame. in San Diego last yeah, year. Yeah, I know. We, we watched the Notre Dame just kick the crap out of somebody. But then there are years like this where I'm I'm glad we get to watch it. I'm glad NBC is going to pick this game up. And, and it, you know, we're going to get a fun game. Um, With that being said, I do like Navy. I think Navy is is a really good football team. Ken Niamatalola's demise has been greatly exaggerated. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean they were right. they were terrible last year. Really bad. Exactly right. Um I don't I think just Notre Dame's too much. This year I think Notre Dame's too much. I've said it multiple times on the show. I think this is maybe the most talented team Brian Kelly's ever had and I think they've had their butt kickings early and they've played teams too close early, and I think they're going to finish the season out just whipping people's butt. Now, does that mean they're going to beat them by 30? No. But can they beat them by 10? Yeah. Can they beat them by 14? Yeah. I can believe that. Two scores? I got it. And nine and a half being the number, give me Notre Dame. I'll lay the points. Midshipmen keep fighting for the American. I, um, I'm going to take Navy plus the nine and a half here. Um, I could see some crazy stuff happening in this game. And I still think Notre Dame wins. But this is one of those where Navy will limit possessions. That's right. Slow things down. Absolutely. And I don't know how well Notre Dame is built for that. So I, I don't I don't really have an answer for that either. But I just think that they can win by two scores. Yeah. I mean, and it, I can it totally be, understand that. He won't be getting turnovers because that's not what Navy does. No, no so, Navy, not so this year not, anyway. So you're not doing that, but you know, anyway, it, it's a gamble. It's just a philosophy about Notre Dame and where I think their program is, and and the statement I think Brian Kelly needs to make after getting beat by Georgia, getting their butt whipped by Michigan, couldn't get the word out, and then getting <laughs> and then just getting taken to the brink and kind of dominate the entire game by Virginia Tech yeah. and just need Ian Book to be a Superman to come back and win that game. No, that makes sense. I, I think Brian Kelly has his team's attention, and for the rest of the season, what little what little football we got left, I think they're going to be ready. And I don't think they're letting anybody else sneak up on them. No, I could, I could buy so, that. that I that's could buy just that. my philosophy about how I feel about Notre Dame more than a knock on Navy. Let's – uh. Let's roll through the honorable mentions here. We got six of them this week, which is always we, we got five and uh, in a quarter and another and another. Uh, Wake Forest at Clemson. Clemson a thirty-four and a half point favorite. It opened at thirty-one. Wake Forest, the only other decent team on the schedule aside from Texas A&M. 
Is there that could finish with three, four losses? Is there any chance? No. Nope. There's you don't think there's any chance? No. Nope. I'd love to see it. I don't think it's happening. I don't think it is either. I mean, I, they, they just got they just got beat by Vi Tech. Yeah. About three touchdowns. I was about to say they got they got run. That's sad. That's sad. I I want to believe. I want to I want to think finish with with four losses, three at least three losses. Yeah, and li- well, I mean, this will be the third. Well, then, yeah, then they, then they're gonna finish with four. I don't think they're winning the rest of them either. You might be right. It's still a great job by Dave Clawson. Not a knock on done. Dave Clawson. It, Wake Forest is not an easy place to go get a job in turning around. No, it's it's not an easy place to get players. No. So it's high it's, academic standards, and uh, and, and you just. You just don't have the facilities. You're recruiting around a lot of football. You're right. The North Carolina area, there's there's tons of people that come in that state and take kids. Now you you 100 so percent right. 100 percent right. Next up, Texas at Iowa State. Iowa State a seven point favorite. Mm. That is way more points than I thought this would be. Texas should be disrespected. They should absolutely be embarrassed and ashamed of themselves yeah. for being a seven-point dog to anybody in the Big 12. Other than Oklahoma. Named Oklahoma. Yeah. That's a damn disgrace. Iowa State, like I'm telling you, the numbers love Iowa State. But they are begging you to take Texas. They are begging yeah. you to take Texas. I think they are. Because that's, that's a You're crazy You're not getting line. a better number if you want Texas. This thing is not going to seven and a half. They're not going to give Texas more than. Well, now, currently there's uh, over sixty percent of the bets are on Texas, and it's gone to seven. It was at it six was, and a half. Yeah, but I don't think it's going past seven. No, I think it's just going to sit here. I think it's going. I, I'm not going to say that. I was going to say if it goes past seven, I, I might take them, but I don't see them getting run. I can see them getting beat. I really need them to get, lose this game. Oh yeah, you get the under right. I got the under. I got under a, what? Eight and a half. I got an eight and a half under. It's a, it's a, it's a big ticket. And they got Iowa State this week, and then they got Baylor next week. I got two swipes at them. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Who they got the end of the season? TCU, I think, or Texas Tech, one or the other. If it's TCU, oh no, no, no it's Texas Tech. It's it Texas is Texas Tech because yeah. they've already beaten TCU. Yep. So no, they got beat by TCU. My boy cares. Yeah, yeah. TCU already handled them. That's right. Give them the third loss. Michigan State at Michigan is the next one. I can't believe this wasn't a big game. But it's not a big it's game. It's not because Michigan State is pretty terrible. Yeah, it's not good there. And I think uh, this is the retirement tour. I don't know about that. It might be. Well, I think because they're, they're going to tell him that he has to change his coaching staff. Like his offensive coaching staff. I think there's a chance he does that. But I don't think he, I, I think he goes the David Cutcliffe route. I think he says, you know what? I'm tired. And I'm done. I don't know, man. And I, I think he I think he just walks out. I think some of these guys like what they do. They don't know how to do anything else. What's he gonna do? Go home and go fishing every day? I mean, that's a boring ass life. He would be he's not gonna be one of these guys to go get a TV job. I think he's a football coach. That's all he's ever done. That's all he knows how to do. I loves. think that some of the off field stuff I'm sure might be getting to him a little bit. He, it would have got to him. I mean it's been going on for two years. He quit one of those years. Hey, I mean, it, I look, look, I, you I, might I be think, right. I think the team is struggling. Okay, that didn't mean I think they're going to win. I don't think they're going to cover. I think this no, is it's a, a Michigan minus thirteen and a half. I is think the this line. is a Jim Harbaugh situation where he hasn't had a lot of opportunities to go up against some of these guys that have pushed him around. He had his he had a shot against Notre Dame, and he he came with the thunder on it. that, and nobody in the country thought that was going to happen. This guy thought it was going to happen. Yeah, you did. And I think it's going to be the same thing this week. Oh yeah, they're, they're going to put the beating on them. Michigan State has has ruined our season too many times. When we got a chance to whoop them, we're going to whoop them. When they down, we're going to beat them up. Yeah, I'm not going to feel bad about it. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I also think the Michigan team is getting really good. All I want is I think a so too. good football game for the game at the Big Ten. That's all I want. Oh yeah, I I agree. That's all I want. I would like for it to be competitive. I would like for it to be competitive because last year was not. Well, I mean, most of those years haven't been. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I agree. We'll keep rolling. UCLA at Utah. This is for the Pac-12 South. A lot of people do not realize that because Utah is sitting at 8-1. and one. UCLA is 4-5. and five. How many conference losses do they have? UCLA has two. Utah has one. So 
That'll give them both two. That would and give them both two. would have the tiebreaker. You get that right. If UCLA wins That's out, how math works. UCLA goes to the Pac-12 championship game. How insane is that? Chip Kelly, baby. His hey, demise was greatly he, exaggerated as well. 21-point line here. Now, Utah has covered, since they went and lost to USC, they have won and covered five straight by an average of 25 and a half points. That is nuts. So most teams are sorry, though. Oh, yeah, a lot of them are sorry. I mean, they only beat, it, here's the deal, though. They beat Washington by five. They had to beat those other teams way worse yep. to get that average back up. That's right. So they they have been very dominant here lately. But UCLA. UCLA is a well-coached football team. And they got things turned around. They, yeah. they They're have playing started well. to figure this out. I, I'm very curious to watch this offense against that defense because that's strength on strength. Yeah. I agree. That's best on best. That's when this game's going to be fun. When Utah's on offense Excuse me. and UCLA's on defense, I don't know how fun that's going to be to watch. And I'm really not sure what's going to happen there. But when Chip Kelly and his side of the ball gets it, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be interested to see how he hangs with this team. Next game up is a fun one that we talked about in the gambling picks. Temple at home, a six-point dog to Tulane. Two well-coached teams, two really fun teams to watch. It opened Tulane minus three and a half, and I immediately thought, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Tulane is a favorite Yeah, at Temple. At Temple. Temple plays great at home. They've played much better at home than yeah. they do on the road. And I saw it this afternoon at Temple plus four. We started the program tonight. Here it is, Temple plus six. Yeah. It's a crazy number. Like, I, I'm not sure what's going on there. I haven't seen any injuries. I haven't seen any of that. I don't know. So, I, I don't know if maybe somebody got some information somewhere. And, and I mean, it could just be them crazy Cajuns down in New Orleans riding Willie Fitz. Yeah, I could, I I could mean, see that. I mean, nothing would surprise me. I mean, Fritz could be in for the Arkansas job. He could be in for all kind of different stuff. Well, that that's but, so. This is that time of season two where I like to start watching coaches that have done really well, and now now they're starting to interview for things, and the agents calling them and saying, "Hey!" And instead of working on game plan, they're looking at houses and different. That parts same thing of the happened country. with uh, Tom Herman. That's right. At the end of his uh, Houston, it happens run. to it happens to a lot of guys. Yeah, happens to a lot of them. And uh, no, nobody's nobody's immune to to seeing big dollar signs. I mean, it gets to us all, and uh, and that's when folks get got. Yeah. So I mean, we'll see. I don't think Rod Carey's going anywhere. So oh no, he's Temple, no calling him. Temple has not looked great the past however long. They did get the win against uh, South Florida. That's right. Uh, but they got embarrassed a couple of games before that. SMU and and UCF. Those are really good football oh, teams. Oh, I, I agree. Gary. I agree. But uh, I understand they're really good, but also understand that UCF has already got three losses, and, I mean, they just hammered Temple. Like, 63-21, like, not even close. So, either way, last uh, last ball game, and this is not one that Chris uh, liked for me to talk about, but it is an interesting circumstance. Texas A&M, an 11-point favorite at home against South Carolina, a and M is the best win right now for Clemson and for Alabama. That's pathetic. That is nuts. And both of them need Texas A and M to continue winning. Yeah, because beat South Carolina, that'll make that win look a lot better. If, well, it'll get it'll get A and M to seven wins, and then if you get A and M to pull an upset against Georgia or against LSU, which I don't think it's going to happen, but you need at least A and M to be at seven and five. Because you get South Carolina to win this game, then you got two six and six teams, or two. Well, South Carolina will be five and whatever. Let's say they won't be six and six. They'll be five and seven if they get this one, because they ain't beating Clemson. So, I don't, it's an interesting game if for no other reason than South Carolina lose this one. Will Muschamp's going to be four and eight. I don't think that. I don't think that matters. And it's it'll be four and eight in just in a year that he said he finally has the talent that he feels good that enough was before the season started. Agreed. That's what I'm saying. He doesn't have that talent today. He didn't have it last week, and he didn't have it the week before that. He didn't have it the week before that. That talent got hurt. 
the, he had Jake Bentley, but he was talking about his defensive line. It's fine. And his offensive line. And he's got it's those. Fine. If you don't have a trigger man in the SEC, you can't win. Agreed with that. Agreed with that. And he doesn't have a trigger man. I do think this will be an interesting football game. I don't There's think a bunch Texas A&M going to be interesting, but they're not worth talking about. Well, I mean, in that case, that should wrap up the show, right? I think so. <laughs> All right, that is going to wrap up the show. That is the Week Twelve College Football Preview Show. Of course, we appreciate all of you for being here. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, share the show out, leave some comments, tell us what you like, what you don't like, tell us what games we should have talked about as opposed to A and M in South Carolina. Uh, Go over to tunicatravel.com. That is the place to be. I'm telling you, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books. Tunicatravel.com is the website. It'll give you more information over there. Winningcureseverything.com for us. Picks, previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms, etc. We'll see you all again next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.